And a lot of people think that you have to go out and get a car. Uh Um, I tell people, start with what you have. Start with what's in your driveway. Okay. Um, One of my mentees, um, uh, she's now doing her thing on Toro. She's up to two two vehicles now. But she started with what she had. Um, Mm Because I was like, you work from home. You're never driving your car anyway. Mm -hmm. Just rent that out. See how that goes. So she did that. She liked it. Then she went out. She got another vehicle. Um, One of the vehicles was paid for. The other vehicle, you know, she got, um, I believe she's financing. But, like, start with what you have. You don't necessarily have to go out and rent. Or, I'm sorry, go out and buy a vehicle. Welcome to another edition of His Healthy Habits. I am Mr. Triple H himself. And today I have a special guest that I united with. And their energy was amazing. They have amazing information that I can't wait to speak to them about and let y'all get to know more about from the perspective of creating a supplemental income and starting a business from the ground level up and doing big things with it. And she's here to just, you know, provide inspiration, information and instruction to many of y'all who watch this episode and more. So I want to introduce y'all to my girl, Natasha. Natasha, what's up? Hey, what's up, Reggie? I what's think up? that was the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> All right. I take that. I'm working yeah. on it. I'm trying yeah. to get better. I'm going to have to take you everywhere I go. Like yeah, <laughs> Reggie, yeah. introduce me. But hey, um, happy to be here. Um, excited. And uh, yeah. So let's let's tell the people about you first, because people, of course, you know, who don't know you, which mm-hmm. I know in the future, everybody going to know you. Yes, I'm going to manifest that. Yes. Um, tell them about your background, what you do. You know, we can stick, I guess, you know, with the peer-to-peer car space. Okay. So, uh, my name, for for those that don't know, my name is Natasha Cash. Um, I had a traditional career path. So what I mean by that is I went to college for four years, went to grad school, was in corporate America. Um, you know, I did fairly decent, um, climbed up the ladder, got into management and just decided one day, um, that there's gotta be more to life than this. Um, I wanted um, more freedom. So I wanted time freedom, I wanted location freedom, and I wanted financial freedom. So um, back in 2017, I created my first business. Um, It was a t-shirt business, a Christian t-shirt business. Um, I still sell t-shirts, but I just don't promote it as much as the um, peer-to-peer car rental space um, because that is the the lane that I'm in now that provides... um, the most income, the most revenue. Um, and that's just kind of where I've been excelling. So I got into, uh, the rental car space back in 2020, um, the end of 2020, uh, I've been doing it for almost two years now. Um, and yeah, it's it's been great. I've learned a lot, (laughs) um, experienced a lot and I'm just, yeah, just got a lot to share. So let me ask you this. When, just going back to what you said when you were working corporate, mm-hmm. when when did you transition from you know being full time corporate to being a full time entrepreneur? Like when did you know it was that time? Uh, actually, I recently transitioned, so I mm-hmm. transitioned to end of October. Okay, congratulations. Um, thank That's you, <laughs> thank you. Um, I had been preparing to transition for like the last two years, so mm-hmm. I've been preparing, setting myself up for that day when I finally decided to um to do entrepreneurship full time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I don't know. It wasn't difficult. Cause like I said, I've been preparing myself for like mm-hmm. the last two years, been setting myself up um, to do that. Um, it's been exciting, mm-hmm. been very rewarding, but yeah, I'm, I'm fresh like 60 days out. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Cause yeah. you know, a lot of people, honestly, when they make that choice of becoming an entrepreneur and they see, you know, you're making some profits some people do make that leap of faith without preparing. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think kind of we're getting into like an era now where entrepreneurs are prom- promoted heavily more than previously, you know, in the last decade. Right. But I think like, you know, I want you to talk about that too. Like a lot of people don't prepare or plan their transition correctly. You know, they kind of just kind of go like off of an emotional whim. Yes. Yeah. So like, what did you do to plan and prepare like your transition strategically where it wasn't just like, an emotional decision like oh i hate this job (laughs) i'm gone right you know um (laughs) so with that i believe there's not a right or wrong answer like some people i see the the the, the, um the school of thought on both sides you Mm -hmm. know if you don't have a job or you don't have that safety net then that may push you to hustle and work harder 
Versus mm-hmm. if you do have that safety net, then you might hold back and not work as hard. So for me, I know my personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more of a stable creature. Like I mm-hmm. like stability. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> for me, uh, like not knowing, you know, where my next meal is gonna come from, or not knowing how to fill up my tank, like that would drive me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I would yeah. be like a nervous wreck. So I know that about myself. So I was like, okay, I have to prepare myself so that once I make this transition, if for some reason it doesn't go the way I envision, then I have something to fall back. So mm-hmm. for for me, what I did was um, I started stacking my money, I started saving. Mm-hmm. I started paying stuff off. Um, I started uh, investing in my education. Um, as you know, you know, we're both mm. part of the morning meetup and mm, exactly. I start taking courses and things of that nature, um, yeah. to educate myself so that when that time came, it wasn't as scary for me. Like I have all yeah. these ducks in a row. So, you know, in the event, I don't know, something happens, you know, um, I'm not depending on just, you know, my entrepreneurship, um, endeavors Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) to 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 pay my bills that's how i did it um now there's again like i said there's no right or wrong way like i just feel people have to do what works best for them Mm and their situation some people are spontaneous like that and they could just be like you know i'm out and then they make it happen like i said for me i would have been a nervous wreck like (laughs) and that's just so i had to do what work work best for me let me ask you did you have like a certain goal like was like okay like once i start matching my monthly or my annual income with what I'm doing in my entrepreneurial space, I'll transition or was it something else like that when you set that goal that you knew you were like, okay, I'm comfortable enough to take this leap? It was a combination of things. Um, So one of the things um, I remember Dave said on the morning meetup is when you have consistently made uh, your monthly income three months in a row, Mm -hmm. um, then that would be maybe a better time to be like, hey, mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of got this. Um, I, I know what I'm I'm doing or, you know, it won't be as risky. Um, so that was a com- that was a, one of the deciding factors for mm-hmm. me Two, it was just um, if I'm being honest. It was just like my motivation, you know, like I'm at work, I had, a you know, a good job, great coworkers, but. I'm in the meeting thinking about my business. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I just wasn't, my heart wasn't in it. And mm-hmm. I'm a very, like, passionate person. Like, mm-hmm. I would rather um, not be a part of something than to, like, half be a part of something. And mm-hmm. I just knew um, I got to the point where I was that. Um, and then there were also um, company reasons as well. Like, my company that I was working for was going through a huge transition, lawsuit, um, mm-hmm. people were, um, being let go. So it mm-hmm. was just that with, mm-hmm. I had set my own personal goal, um, which was actually November. Um, I said I left in October, so it mm-hmm. was like a month prior to that. So I'd already set my own personal goal that, you know, with the company atmosphere, everything that was going on, um, you know, the, the income I was making at the time, like all of that just, it just felt right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. That's good to know because you, you you said something else too because a lot of I think we have to choose and yeah, I don't think it's like you said it's, it's, it doesn't matter which one it just it's, people have their choices based off you know you want to make a decision based off a of passion or something you found right and of course and hopefully in the future it leads to a profit or sometimes it is for initially just for the profit which is nothing wrong and then you can find a passion right. within that profit so I guess for you you said you did it like for the passion like so what. What led you to like in 2020 to like pick up going into peer to peer cars? Like, were you like looking for different endeavors just to make like a profit, or was mm-hmm. it something you like? Oh shoot, I kind of like this. Like, well, you know what? I kind of was already in it. So, um, a little bit about about my background. For the last nine years, I've worked in the automobile space. Uh-huh. So I started off as a salesperson, a car salesperson. Okay, I sold used cars. Um, which shocked me. Uh, <laughs> Why you say that? Were you not a you know? Did you ever think you would be doing that? Bruh, I, no, uh, mm. <laughs> never. Like yeah. in a billion years, I was like me sell cars. Like yeah. first of all, I was like I don't know anything about cars. You know, um, at that time, my knowledge was you know the big pedal makes you go faster and the uh-huh. small pedal makes you slow down. 
Um, never thought I would sell cars. Um, but what happened was I was in the market for a vehicle. I went, purchased a vehicle. I had a really dope experience at the car dealership. So, um, me being the jokester that I am, I was half joking when I asked the question, but also serious, like, Hey, are you guys hiring? Mm -hmm. And they were like, actually we are. So I was like, Oh, cool. And they were like, you know, um, you know, you buy a car, especially back then. Um, I'm talking, this is like, Ooh, geez, maybe 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, you were in the dealership for a while. So I was there for about four hours. So, you know, yeah. we, we, uh, I got very familiar with my, my salesperson and vice versa. So he was like, given your personality, um, he's like, I think you would do great. And I'm like, I don't know anything about cars. He's yeah. like, I didn't know anything about cars. Mm. Um, he said, but you know, we'll train you, we'll teach you. And the company that I worked for, the model that they had, it really wasn't about, um, there's an aspect of selling, but it was more about relationships mm. and building those relationships, um, which I had experience doing that in, you know, previous jobs. Mm. So um, I came on. Uh, had a great time, had fun, um, worked my way up. I started off as a, a salesperson. Then I was like a senior salesperson, which is like uh, like a key holder or something like that mm -hmm. um, in retail. Then I became a sales manager, then assistant um, general manager. I had the opportunity to um, travel and relocate it, re mm -hmm. uh, relocate it. Um, Cause I started in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, okay. Then we opened up a store here in Houston, actually in Katy. Uh -huh. I volunteered. Was like, yeah, I'll go. Um, so I went to Katy, um, came relocated to Houston, opened up the Katy store. Um, I got to help out in Virginia, Tyler, Texas. So I got mm -hmm. to travel a lot. Okay. Um, one of the perks of being in management was that you got a driver. You got a company car. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay, I didn't know what that was. That's good. To yeah. Know. So you, you got a company car with my particular company. That was one of the perks. You got a mm -hmm. company car. So every day I could drive something different, mm. which is kind of like the peer to peer the rental car mm -hmm. industry. So um, I did that. I worked for them for about seven years. And then I transitioned to the other side of the automobile industry, meaning I was no longer in a dealership, but I worked for a company uh, an auto company that sold vehicles, but we sold them primarily online. So similar to like a Carvana or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. Um, so I was still in the industry, still in the space. I just wasn't in retail anymore. Like didn't have to in do person. It wasn't like in person. No, it wasn't sales. in person. No, it wasn't okay. in person. And I didn't have to deal with um, the retail hours. You know, uh -huh. I was in a, a corporate building. You know, hours were like nine to five, eight or nine to six, something like that. Mm. Um, so. I had a lot of knowledge about the automobile industry anyway. And then when I started looking into other things, it just naturally, I just naturally gravitated towards the peer to peer rental car space. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, actually, I was doing Toro before it was Toro in my job because I was able to sure. drive any car that mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know what I mean? Even though I, I wasn't technically renting it, mm -hmm. but I still, you know, it's the, the same concept. So, um, that's how, you know, my rental car uh, business journey um, came about. So did you, while you were driving, like, the company's cars, did you have your own car on the side? that was just sitting there, like, they collecting did. dust? Yeah. As huh. a matter of fact, uh, I just paid my car off, and I just hit 40,000 miles. Because I never drove it. <laughs> wow. I never drove it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. How I had, old was the car that you just paid off? Uh... It's a, I think a twenty eighteen and forty k. Oh, that's yeah. You're right. You didn't you didn't drive that thing. No, at all. Like, um, honestly, I started driving the car when I left the company to go to uh -huh. <laughs> the company that we sell vehicles online. So no, I did. I might drive it like to the gym or you know around the corner, yeah. but no. Um, I think when I bought it, it had like fifteen thousand miles on it, something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, every time I go in for an oil change, they're like, you want to trade in? We'll give you good. I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> so so that was the first car you put on Turo? No, it was not. So <laughs> Okay, this is I'm going to know. Yeah. So I did not put my personal vehicle on Turo until much later. So what mm. I did was um, I heard about Turo. Um, dang, I don't know why I didn't do that. that was, I see where you're going. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do that. But I actually went out and got a vehicle specifically for Turo. Uh -huh. um, because back then I was real attached to my car. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I was I'm like, reading about that ebook yeah. having that attachment. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want nobody in my in my car, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I went and got a vehicle specifically for Toro. Um, so yeah. I had one vehicle, 
on Toro, and then that's how I started. And when was that? That was 2020, you said, right? This that was, first? oh no, what are we, 2022? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, it was 2021. Sorry. So it's been a year and a half going on two years. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, my math was off. So I did this in August of 2021. Okay. Is when I went and got a vehicle specifically for Toro. And I okay. put that on Toro. And I saw the results. Uh-huh. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> like, so something, if, maybe try this some more. If I had two vehicles. Yeah. So I did that in, I bought that in August. Then in September, I got another vehicle. So one month after you put I your first that. car. And that, was, that wasn't due to your job. That was due probably, was that due to the income you were making solely from Maturo? Uh, Both. So oh. I used my job income. Mm-hmm. Um, that was another thing too. I, I knew I wanted to exit. So mm-hmm. I used my job as my investor. Okay. So that, that was another reason why I was like, hey, I'm paying off debt. I'm saving. Mm-hmm. And then I'm taking this money and I'm investing in my, in my business. So okay. um, with my job, I was still working um, a nine to five. I got the second car. So August, I did good numbers. And then I got the second car. Um, I actually remember it was 9-11. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, so you don't just, remember that day. Okay. Yeah, it just, it just happened to be 9-11. So I got the second car. And then October was the first time I had both cars running on the platform. Okay. So I had two cars in October. This is 2021. And I'm like, So three okay. months later, you had both cars running. Yeah. Yeah. And how did that like motivate and inspire you once you saw the differences between that? Oh, I was like, okay, cool. I need to get some more assets. Like, okay. <laughs> so um, I was doing, I mean, and I have economy cars, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, again, there's no right or wrong answer to what type of vehicle you want to get. Um, I personally have a, economy cars. I believe that economy cars are more stable. Again, I told mm-hmm. you I'm a stable person, yep. a stable creature. Yep. Yep. Um, they're more stable. Uh, I believe they're more practical for the people, my target audience, who mm-hmm. I am targeting. And I also believe um, they're more economical, you yeah. know. Um, so for me, I had two economy cars and I'm saying like, okay, cool. I think at that time I was doing maybe, let's say like 15 per car. So I'm like, mm-hmm. so extra three. Month. Yeah. yeah, per car. So mm-hmm. three grand. Okay. When, when I had both cars. Was that gross or net? Now, which one's the bigger one? <laughs> the gross one? Yeah, the <laughs> that, one before we paid to roll in the... No, that was net. That was what I was Oh, okay. Like, okay. That was what I was bringing okay. Yeah, that was net. So I'm like, three grand, two cars. Okay, if I get two more, that's Boom. six. So, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this. Because you had that used car, not used car self, strategy and knowledge. But yeah, you had that knowledge. Like, did you... Finance that first car? Or did you buy it outright? Um, because you know that's like the question nowadays. It's right. like you know, it's financing better, which I've heard both sides. I mm-hmm. hear some people say finance. You know, um, use OPM, other people's money. Mm-hmm. Some people say go the other route. Like, no, get you a used car, pay the market value, cash value, so it's not a liability just in case things happen within the market or the peer to peer space. What was your What was your move? So, I financed them. However, I had a certain amount that I financed. So I was debating, do I want to pay cash? Because I had the cash to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Or do I want to finance it, use OPM, other people's money? Um, for me, in my situation, I ended up financing the vehicles. Mm-hmm. But I had a target. Like, this is how much I'm willing to spend. Mm-hmm. Um, which I will tell anyone, before you go car shopping or before you jump into this industry you got to do your homework yeah. you have to do your homework you have to know your numbers know what's a hard stop for you what's going to work for you and not or, or not um or won't work for you so my advice would be if you finance a vehicle do not um where's the camera at? like do right. not <laughs> do not finance a vehicle you cannot afford mm. so my second vehicle the, the first vehicle that i got i could afford the monthly note if for some reason it didn't get rented out. What was the first vehicle you got? It was a Honda Elantra. Both of them were Honda Elantras. Okay. Um, I could afford the note if, let's say, 30 days went by and, you, and no one rented the yeah, vehicle. Yeah. I could pay for it out of my job mm-hmm. and still be okay. Mm-hmm. So that would be my advice to anybody. Do not go out and finance a vehicle that you cannot afford. Mm-hmm. And depend, be depending on Toro or hire a car, get around, whatever mm-hmm. um, peer-to-peer uh, platform that you use in order to pay that note. Okay. 
that that to me, in my opinion, is not smart. Yeah. Um. So I ended up financing the vehicle. Um. And my my strategy was okay. I'm gonna finance it. I'm gonna keep this money in my pocket, and then in, I'm gonna recoup some of the money. Um. Through my uh, the income that I'm making, and then I'll pay the vehicle off. Mm-hmm. That was my strategy. Um. Now, like you said, it's different for everyone. Everybody's mm-hmm. situation is totally different. Um, again, I would say do your homework, do your research, and you know, um, do what works best for you. And a lot of people think that you have to go out and get a car. Uh-huh. Um, I tell people, start with what you have. Start with what's in your driveway. Okay. Um, one of my mentees, um, uh, she's now doing her thing on Toro. She's up to two, two vehicles now. But she started with what she had. Because um, mm-hmm. I was like, you work from home. You're never driving your car anyway. Mm-hmm. Just rent that out. See how that goes. So she did that. She liked it. Then she went out. She got another vehicle. Um, one of the vehicles was paid for. The other vehicle, you know, she got. Um, I believe she's financing. But, like, start with what you have. You don't necessarily yeah. have to go out and rent. Or, I'm sorry, go out and buy a vehicle. So like, let me ask you, I'm sorry, Andrew, but you made no. me think about something. So what about like somebody who has a nine to five, right? Like mm-hmm. how you had your nine to five, mm-hmm. but you, you may not take any lunch break or anything. You stay at your job for that nine to five, you eat lunch at your job. Do you think it would strategically be smart for somebody to just rent that car out while the time they're at work from nine to five and try to roll that way as like an entry level way before, like you said, going out and buying another car? Like if that car is just literally sitting at your job, like for it? Eight hours a day. I mean, thinking back from what you yeah. experienced, would you say that would be a good way to get into it or no? Uh, it depends. So my first thought was no, because uh-huh. it's Houston. You know what I mean? Like you'd be like, I, I'm planning on returning the car at five, and then there's yeah. an accident on six ten, and you know you don't get to where you want to go to six or seven. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that that is possible. Um. Typically, when people are renting your car, though, they're not renting like a specific time block. It's by the day. Oh. Okay. So it'll be like um. For instance, I just had um, one of my rentals, the renter extended for two more days. Uh So um, I think today's, what, the 21st? Mm. So he's good to, what, the 23rd. Okay. Um, So that's usually how they do it by Uh, day. They don't do it by hour? I don't believe Do any of the platforms do it by hour that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Now, maybe on, like, if you were doing it on the private side, you might be able to, to do something like that. Or actually... I take that back because with Toro you can set your hours, so you can mm-hmm. kind of do it from like nine to five or something like that. So yeah, that that is a possibility. You okay. could do it that way. Um, just again, I'm just thinking about Houston, Houston traffic, and you know, yeah, yeah. You say nine o'clock, and you know, people show up nine twenty. Yeah, <laughs> so no, if you have other commitments after work or before work, that could be a little. That's true. That could be a little. That was, that was just quite. I was thinking yeah. like you know, but a lot of people do have their own cars, and you said like starting with what you have already. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, start with what you have. Um, if you just have one vehicle and your mama has a special, uh, spare vehicle, mm-hmm. ask her, can you rent out yeah. dad, you know, yeah. boo thing, yeah. sneaky link. I don't know, yeah. but you know, <laughs> start somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, that would be my advice before going out to buy a vehicle or, yeah. um, whether you're paying cash or finance, what, what resources do you have around you that you can tap, tap into? into? Yeah. Before you go out and. Spend some, spend some money, yeah. I appreciate that. Because I think about it, too, because you, you, I appreciate you talking about the successes. Like you said, first month you were seeing about 1500 average. But, but, like, within those first couple of months, what were the, some of, like, the struggles you weren't expecting that oh, hit you? Geez. That oh. you learned from? So, Cause, you know, we always see the money. We see the oh, yeah. like, people. But we don't think or we yeah, don't the, we aren't privy to the struggles, yeah. you know, that a lot of people do while getting before they get to these major successes of buying two, three umpteen cars, you know? Yeah, this is getting good. So, um, October, I told you I had both cars up. I'm like, I'm on top of the world, feeling good. (laughs) Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, Can't wait to see what November brings. And boom, the second vehicle that I purchased got into a total loss. Okay. That's what I said. Still had the temp tags on it. Wow. Yeah. Total loss. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to think. Oh, what happened with that vehicle? Uh, My renter... (laughs) <laughs> this is a PG show? No. Okay, cool. No, cool. cool. So, so, <laughs> we want to know the raw, the real. Because when I get into yeah, it, like yeah, I start, yeah, yeah, I yeah. You good. Use, use a couple of adjectives. Uh-huh. So, Go ahead. My renter was stopped at the intersection. 
she stopped. So she's the first car. Behind her is a Tesla. The third car is the one that caused the accident. Mm. So it's one of those days in Houston where it was raining. You know how we had those days when yep. it's just raining and you like yep. when you make it to work, you like, thank you, Lord, mm. you know, or wherever you're going. It was one of those type days. So the third car that I'm going to say this Negro um, <laughs> was speeding. Now, they're all stopped. Mm. He tries to stop. The ground is wet. So he slides. He slides into the back of the Tesla, mm. which slides into the back of my car, mm. which pushes my uh, renter into the middle of the intersection. Whoa. Exactly. And there's a um, truck that's coming. Thank God he just hit the front of the bumper. Like it's just like the front just clean came off. Um, the guy that caused the accident has no driver's license, has warrants, and he tried to flee the scene. Wow. Um, thank God for the good Samaritans that were around. Um, they were able to uh, flag the police down, mm -hmm. hold him like they blocked him in until the police came and. Wow. Yeah, so I had damage to the front of the car mm -hmm. and the back of the car. Um, okay. Like the uh, fender, front fender, it like it just looked like somebody just snapped it off. Like, mm -hmm. thank God the way it hit, um, that's all that happened. Um, the renter was okay. Um, the lady behind me was okay. But um, that was all caused, you know, due to yeah. someone's negligence. Someone, yeah, yeah. Um, remember, I said I had a price point. Um, so mm -hmm. I didn't spend a whole lot of money on that vehicle mm -hmm. so the cost of repairs basically was the price of the vehicle so uh -huh. they just totaled it out yeah so what was the comeback process after losing that after that event for you like what was did you what was the real like you said you, you just totaled it out of course you probably just got another car i did but, eventually but it was yeah. you know it's a process and yeah. then this happened in november so we had three major holidays so i had mm -hmm. thanksgiving i had christmas New Year's. So that actually didn't um, get resolved till sometime in January. Did it have to be resolved by Turo? Or With just Toro, you, yeah. Or With you Toro. had to go outside to your insurance? No, Toro. So um, Toro. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure that whatever platform you're renting on, that you are covered with um, their insurance. Mm -hmm. um, in the event of a total loss, you want to use the platform's insurance mm -hmm, first. Yeah. Because that's what you're paying a percentage of your your mm -hmm. your uh your rentals. Like you don't get I don't get a hundred percent of my rental. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Toro gets theirs, or hire car gets theirs. So you wanna go through them first. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you can't go through them, then you wanna go through your renter. Like your insurance, mm -hmm. your personal insurance wants you want that to be your last uh, And that's resort. what I was gonna ask you. So you still need your own that's might seem like a stupid question, but I'm no, gonna, such thing. So you still need your own insurance, which you gotta of course get first. Mm -hmm. Then you get Turo's insurance, and then the renter needs to. You have to verify the renter has their own insurance too, right? Uh, or no? You don't necessarily have to verify it because in order to rent on those platforms, they already have to have the insurance. Yeah. Um, now, like Hire Car, for example, for example, um, when you have a new rental, they'll send you the insurance documents. Like, mm -hmm. so they'll tell you like this customer doesn't have insurance yet, so don't exchange keys. And then mm -hmm. once they have the insurance they'll send you an email saying, okay, now the renter is covered for the okay. insurance. Um, so, um, personal insurance, again, for me, I my vehicles are insured. Yeah. Um, because you have to think, Toro is only going to cover the vehicle while it's being used on Toro. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at the gas station filling up to go drop a car off, and mm -hmm. someone runs into me at the gas station, yeah, Toro's Toro not going to cover that. Okay. Because it's not sense. on Toro time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you need to have uh, some type of insurance. Um, not necessarily your personal insurance, because some insurance companies don't, are, they frown upon um, insuring vehicles that are used for rental purposes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what, I mean, just off the top of your head, I know you're not getting paid for that, but, tomorrow, but who... <laughs> Who um, would you kind of suggest to somebody should go to, you know, um, trying to get this peer-to-peer -peer You can go, like, right Lula. Um, yeah. That's a company that does peer-to-peer uh, -peer insurance. Uh, Liberty Mutual. They're better than, um, like, Travelers. Nationwide and stuff like that. I use Nationwide, so I'm asking, like. Um, or just ones you may have thought of that don't, that frown upon it, like companies that Well, I know Geico, it. for one, frowns upon really? it. Really? Yeah, okay. Geico that's frowns upon know. it. Um, I think progressive, you can let them know that the vehicle will be used for mm -hmm. um, rental use. Um, now, your rates may go up, 
Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the insurance companies that I named before, like they specialize in that. Okay. Um, I know State Farm also has like a commercial um, rental policy as well, yeah. so you can look into that. So, so do you have to let them? Sorry, do you have to let them know beforehand when you're getting an insurance policy? Like I'm using this, or is it better kind of not to? No, you can't say not to, but you know, is it, is it better to let them know so if anything ever does happen, you don't have to go through the battles of you know I think them not knowing. The proper thing to do would yeah. be to let them know. But you it's, know, it's gonna cost you more when you do let them know most of the time, or, or is it pretty much the same price you would get for a normal? Well, I think also insurance too. It's like um, when you get your personal insurance, you know, they look at a lot of factors like your credit, mm-hmm. your income, your driving history. So all of that um, plays a, a role into okay. the price that they give you. But yes, the the honest thing to do would be to tell yeah. them. But Let's do you do necessarily have to? Yeah, that's good. To you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so what? So. You okay? You say, for instance, you that had been the only car you had it totaled. What from so from what time frame, like I said, did it take you to kind of get back on your feet? Or have you gotten that car back yet? Yeah, this was in 2021. Also, so, so, um, I went from two to one, Mm -hmm. so now I just had the one car that was in uh, constant rotation. Um, it took about three months for everything to be cleared out, meaning for um, Toro to cut the check. Mm-hmm. For it to be sent to the lien holder, for them to, you know, um, I guess they erase the debt or whatever, but basically mm-hmm. say that, you know, I don't, I don't owe them any more, um, I don't owe them any more money. Um, so now we're into 2022. So I had the one car um, that was just uh, being utilized. And it was actually a blessing because I... At that point in time, I was really busy with my nine to five. Mm-hmm. So I um, lucked up and I got a long term renter. So okay. he was in my car for like 75 days. Oh, so okay. I really didn't have to think about it. So it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I just saw the deposits. Mm-hmm. Um, so that lasted until like around, I want to say about March ish. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, I got another renter, and then in March that vehicle got into a total loss. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So the first, the first vehicle, first very first vehicle that I got, got into a so total loss. So then you had none, or did you have a? Did I didn't have any at that point. Wow, particular this time. is interesting. I like this. Is what I want to know. This is something yeah. that we don't hear I, about. Hey, I know? had I had three total loss in the first year of business. So did that? So did you make you rethink your choices on if you wanted to still do this or not? No. Why is that? Um, because I understand stood that um it's a part of the game and then like it's part of the industry mm-hmm. and then the total losses that i had um two of them weren't my renter's fault okay. like i mean the, the lady that i was telling you about that got hit at the intersection like you can't control what someone else does you know that mm-hmm. was just unfortunate um timing um and then the second <laughs> total loss that i had in on March, the first car on the first car yeah um that was just a freak accident. Um, yeah. It actually happened not too far from here at the uh, medical center. So I had a, mm-hmm. um, my renter was a nurse, a uh, traveling nurse from Canada, had came in, rented the vehicle, mm-hmm. uh, parked it at the medical center. They were un- um, going through construction. The guy that was like up on the, the scaffold, I don't, I don't know the construction terms, didn't strap himself in properly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he fell. <laughs> like, he, he fell out. Um, luckily, my car saved his life. Because they were like, mm-hmm. if my car had not been there, um, he would have died. So yeah. he fell from however many feet, landed on the uh, the the roof of my car. Um, all his materials and everything fell as well. So total, it was three cars that were damaged. Mine was in the middle. And then there was one to the right. And then there was one to the left. Um, the... I don't know what those things are called, like the boards or whatever that they use. Uh-huh. All those fell. Someone went through the window. Wow. Um, there was like concrete or cement that fell that got on the car. Like, yeah, it was a lot. Um, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances of that happening? You know, um, but it happened. Uh, luckily, no one was hurt. Like I said, he. Um, they said the vehicle is what saved his life. Uh, he went to the hospital. He was discharged that same day, but that was a three car incident um which it it was a lot um mm. because of course you know 
he was at fault, but uh, basically, dude ran out of insurance. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. like, his insurance, he didn't have enough insurance to cover uh, three vehicles, and then I think someone else might have gone to the hospital as well. So, it it was, <laughs> that was an ordeal. <laughs> these, these are interesting stories, but you know what uh, I'm tr- True story, yeah. yeah. So, that happened in March. So, um, I was down to zero cars. Mm-hmm. Um, by May... Uh, Because my birthday's in May. Um, By May, I was like, okay, this is going to be my birthday gift to myself. I purchased two two vehicles um, to add to my fleet. Finance or or cash? Um, Both were finance. Mm -hmm. So I I did the same thing. thing I did the same thing again. Yeah, I financed those. Um, And then one of those vehicles got totaled out. When did that happen? So getting told out is the thing you may just get used to as an owner because things can happen to you or just, I guess, damaged, like you said, because we were talking about that personal attachment. Right. And when you, you, I, I read in your ebook that a lot of people, if you had that personal attachment to your car, don't do it. That, that this may not be the game for don't you. Do it. Don't do it. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's everybody's biggest fear when I talk to them about mm-hmm. this business is, you know, total loss. Yeah. But again, if it goes back to doing your research. Yeah. So because I did my research, because I got, vehicles at decent prices i still had equity in the vehicle because Mm -hmm. um and then i was protected so i made sure you know i had my protection plan with with toro Mm -hmm. i had you know my own personal insurance if i needed it which i didn't Mm -hmm. so actually in both total losses i ended up making money they sent me a check Mm -hmm. um because again it's all about doing your homework and having your numbers right so even a total loss it's not a loss, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you can I, still you can still recoup and you know make money off of that if you do things the proper way. You have your business set up in the the proper. Structure. Is that because the car value went up, or well, how how did you not take a total loss? Like from um, the loss? it was because the price that I paid for the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I noticed again by working in the industry, so I kind of mm-hmm. know like okay, um, because when I worked at the dealership. We were able to buy vehicles at cost. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I know about how much this costs. I know mm-hmm. what you're selling it for. Um, so I didn't overextend myself in the beginning paying for the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So um, then I had equity still in the vehicle. So once they totaled it out with what um, the damage, I think that's how they do it with the, the value and then the damage. Um, because I bought it under value. Okay. I was able to, to get some money back from that. So. And I remember when you said when you, you go to the dealer to go, purchase your car sometimes it's best to not go by yourself right because for the average person like me who may not have any knowledge like you in regards to kind of like purchasing or how the car should be is that what you said like kind of take somebody with you who may be able to help you Mm -hmm. negotiate or what you think what do you think again i think it depends as someone who worked in the industry and i always had to overcome that you know Mm -hmm. people like oh you're trying to scam you're trying to do this like Mm -hmm. honestly i'm not yeah. Um, I'm just trying to help you. I think more car sales people aren't trying to scam you than there are that are really? that are trying to scam you. Yeah. I think it depends on where you're going. So if you go to somewhere like um, CarMax, and mm-hmm. I've purchased um, several vehicles from CarMax. CarMax, their business structure, the way they are set up, there's no like haggling. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not like it, you come in and like, okay, how much you got? Mm-hmm. Like thirty thousand. All right, bet I can sell you for twenty nine. Like the price is the price is the price. Okay. Um, now I think if you go to some of maybe these smaller independent independent mom and pop stuff, mm-hmm. then that's where you might have to possibly bring somebody that has you know a little bit of knowledge mm-hmm. um, and that can help you maneuver because there might be some some um, some haggling. Also, too. Um, Another gym that I'll uh, share is a lot of people don't think about it, but like some of these luxury car dealerships, like your Porsche or Ferraris or something like that, if they have a used car lot, um, you can get some inventory from there fairly cheaply because you think about it, person that's selling for a Ferrari, like their commission is going to be, I don't know, but it's going to be a lot Yeah. versus if they have like a a Nissan Versa on their lot. Like, they're mm. not going to make that much money off of that. You know what I mean? They're yeah, into the high that. end. But a lot of people don't. But that's yeah, that's a gem. Like, you is. know, when you're looking for uh, vehicles, like, also check 
those places as well because if they have used cars they're not in the business of selling yeah used it's just cars. kind of sitting there and yeah like they're they, 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 right? trying to you know get you into a Ferrari yeah. or a Lambo or whatever and typically because their margin and they're able to make so much on those cars mm -hmm. they're able to like write some stuff off as well because mm -hmm. you know it balances out so and that takes me kind of makes me takes my next one so you i know you said you kind of play it safe and do the economy have you thought about transitioning into the luxury side yet or are you just like nah i'm just gonna stick with the economy because i'm cool with the money i'm making off of this i really don't need to venture off into that luxury side uh no i have not uh i, I think i'm gonna stick with economies uh for a couple of reasons um, you know, again, it goes back to the stability, um, my, uh, niche who I'm marketing to, who I'm attracting, um, the cost to fix things. And just, I feel like the economy, economy money, excuse me, is like steady. You know, you can predict it, yeah. you know, kind of, I mean, you can't predict stuff, but you can kind of predict like, okay, this is what this car is going to yeah. do. Um, versus, the exotics, um, yeah, you can make more money in a faster period of time, mm -hmm. but you know, you gotta think about the insurance, you gotta think about the upkeep, you mm -hmm. have to think about, um, honestly, to, um, I believe, I mean, it's Houston, so <laughs> cars get stolen every day, mm -hmm. but I think you have a higher chance of, you know, a Lambo. Mm -hmm. possibly being target than a nissan versa <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, like yeah, yeah. so i'll yeah knock on true. something like <laughs> you know it something hasn't happened it. but you know what I'm saying? like yeah. i haven't had anybody trying to you know steal my elantra you know yeah, yeah. or That's true. or try not to return it you know mm -hmm. um but i've heard of stories or i know people who are in this business and they're like hey i have a mercedes or i have this and this and i had to go you know repo my car for my customer because they didn't mm -hmm. want to get out of it because you know it's whatever events going on yeah. or, you know, they, yeah. they're comfortable with it. Like it's there. So, um, for me again, so like that's I, headaches kind of with the, with the, it's still headaches, economy, but I think it's just a different kind, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just a different kind. Like, you know, if you, if something happened to my, you know, $20,000 Elantra, you know, I'm going to be mad, but yeah. if something happened to my $90,000, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like true that, true that. it's going like, to be a different type of bad. So yeah. 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 So let me ask you, you know, I ain't not, you know, you're kind of hearing this now in this, this time of we're at like recession, inflation. You know, that I had mentioned this to you earlier that people were saying like, okay, right now is not a good time to purchase cars or finance cars or any just purchase cars in general because of inflation. I guess the market value being higher as compared to what several months ago or last year. But what what are your thoughts on that? Like sitting currently where we're at right now, are we in the holidays is. It's, you know, it's Christmas time. You know, people are normally always buying those type of gifts for, mm -hmm. you know, their family and friends, stuff like that. So what do you think? Like, sitting here in December, mm -hmm. like, is it, is, would you say, hey, like, for you, what would you, do you think, wait till maybe springtime, go ahead and move, if you have the, if you have the resources to do it? I say do it. Like, I don't listen to they. Um, I try not to listen to the they because everybody is a critic or everybody has their opinion um, I believe if you've researched, um, the industry and the market used car prices are actually coming down. Like mm -hmm. in 2020, 2021, they were at their peak, but they're actually starting to, you know, come down. Um, and I, I, again, it goes all back to your numbers and, um, uh, making sure that whatever you decide to do, you're comfortable with it. Cause mm -hmm. first and foremost, like my thought is if this car never gets rented or if these cars never get rented, Am I able to pay the note? Mm, okay. The answer is no. Then you don't need to. <laughs> you yeah. don't need to do that. We yeah. need to figure out uh, what we can do so that we can put ourselves in a position that we are able to pay the pay the yeah. note. So do not overextend yourself. If you can't afford it, then um, look at other options, which could be maybe getting a co buyer or you know mm. doing a joint venture with someone or um, paying cash. There are other ways you know to get you to to where you want so that's yeah. the first thing don't overextend yourself you mean like cobra you mean like your parents or somebody like, pa parents sister brother best friend um, of or... yeah so like let's say you and i were partners and i have bad credit you have good credit mm -hmm. but um i know how to run the business i've been doing it for a while so i might approach you like hey rich like let's go get this car i've done the research, blah, 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 you know, 
put it in your name. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a better interest rate, da da da, you know, whoop de whoop. And then we discuss, you know, compensation. So it might mm-hmm. be, hey, we'll split it 50 50, the profits 50 50, 60 40, 70 30. Mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever works for us. And then um, as we get that, pay that car off, and then yeah. we go do that. I mean, you know, right. we. We talked about it earlier, you know, collaboration. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you got to think outside of the box, and mm-hmm. if you're yeah. not in that situation yet, where you can go out and finance a vehicle yeah. and get a good vehicle, um, get a good get a good interest rate. Excuse me. Um, then you got to think outside of that. You I know? never even thought about that. That's why I said, I, I, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah, you always think of like it's only you mm-hmm. all in. You know, when you do stuff like this, or the idea right. behind it. So that's yeah. I, yeah, I mean, and you'll be surprised the number of people that will be willing to help you. Let's say, you know, you have a retired parent and you're just like, hey, you know, like for instance, for uh, example, my mom is retired. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, mom, you want to, I got a way where you can get extra, um, some extra income. Well, what do mm-hmm. I need to do? You know, hey, I'm, hey, could you co-sign for this particular vehicle? whoop de whoop I've done the numbers. This is about what you're going to make, you know, a month. And mm-hmm. then you do it from there. But you got, like I said, you have to start with where you are. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, yeah, you'll get to that point where, you know, um, if you want to finance it, you can. If you want to buy uh, cars under your business name, you can do that as well. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about business credit, business credit. But, you know, in the beginning, you got to PG that business cre- mm-hmm. business credit, which means you have to personal um, guarantee that. So that's going off of your personal credit. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I mean, it all flows together. So, um, yeah, you just got to think of Different ways are, you know, just to, to make it happen. But, that's, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's real. I, pre- I appreciate you putting yeah. that out there because you made me also think something about. So I'm, I have a couple of friends who I know do peer-to-peer car sharing. Mm-hmm. And when I asked them, I was like, hey, like, how are you, how did you structure, you know what I'm saying, your business? And most of them just bought the car and it was in their personal name. You know, and I mentioned, I was like, you know, just for us being business owners, like, did you, did you get a DBA, LLC, a escort da 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 and ninety percent of people I've now I'm coming into contact with didn't do that. Yeah. So what do you think from your experience best for being in it now? Do you think it's better? Is it, is it cool if you just use your personal like taxes or personal I guess mm-hmm. bank account or do you think yes you need to go get the DBA LLC or S Corp started before you buy this first car and then put that car in there? Like what 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 do you think works best? I think it all is gonna depend on what your goals are. Mm. So if you're just like, hey, I just want to make some extra income, or are you like, hey, me and my girls are going to Jamaica in June, and I want to make some extra money to go to Jamaica, then, you know, to fund my trip to go to Jamaica, uh, excuse me, then it might not be best for you to um, go do all the business route. Mm -hmm. If you're like, no, I want to make this uh, a business, um, a full-fledged business, then yeah, I would recommend, you know, getting your LLC, um... You know, getting your uh, your Dunn's number, getting, you know, all the things, your EIN number, all the things that you need. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, but that's not something you got to do right away. Yeah. Excuse me. The first thing I would advise is just to do it mm. because you might not like it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people think that <laughs> they have this misconception that rental car business, peer-to-peer um, car rental is passive. Mm-hmm. And that is not the case. It's very active. Now, there are ways that you can make it more passive or you can make it passive, but there's act, it's active. Like you have mm-hmm. to work in your business. There, there are things that, that you have to do. So first thing would be just to try it out. See if you yeah. even like it, you know, and if you don't like it, then there's no need in going to get all that, you know, getting registered with secretary of state and all that. You just yeah. wasted 300 mm-hmm. bucks. So do you think like from what you've been doing so far, do you think? What things can you not you not actively like release when it comes to managing your your peer to peer car business like that you see is like okay this is something me that I'm actively gonna have to do until there's a second me. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, right now, I would say, and it just occurred on Sunday, is responding to emergencies. Um, mm-hmm. my renter ran over was in a construction site ran over something a piece of i think it was plywood or something that they left in a road mm. tire blew out um and uh you know he called me like <laughs> <laughs> the tire blew. so yeah. right now for me um and where i'm at in my business i am still that you know that contact person mm. um 
you know, what should I do or help me this happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, Toro does have 24-7 roadside assistance, but mm-hmm. most people don't think, you know, to use it. They'll call yeah. you, um, which, you know, I, in that case, I wanted to know, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. what's going on, what's going on with my vehicle and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, so do you think it's better from like a income standpoint, like initially to do most of the things yourself versus trying to like get someone else to do it. I mean, like, you know, I think you talked about like the mechanics of the car, the repairs, the upkeep, the washing the car, Mm -hmm. you know, getting it washed and clean yourself or, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of, or is it more time consuming to you and not as profitable to do some of these things or not do some of these things? Like, you know, like the things we don't see, like we think, okay, here you go. Person says, I want your car. Boom, they get the car. Oh, drops off your car. Everything's perfect. That's mm-hmm. the end of it. But I know you you know that's not right. at all. It's Everything, a- like you said, is, is, is definitely not 100% passive. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about this active side. Like, do you think, like, having to meet the person there to drop off the car, make sure it's clean, like, are those things that, you know, you feel like are more time consuming and worth your time versus giving it to somebody else like your cousin to some paid him fifty dollars and be like, mm-hmm. hey do this and that. Right. You know? Like what's your take on that? I think it depends on um the number of cars you have. Um right now the number that that's in my fleet, I have five vehicles right now. So it's manageable for one person. Mm-hmm. Um as I'm scaling, as I'm moving up, I'm gonna need to hire help. But there are things that I do in my business and also things that I talk about in my ebook as well as um, my course that I teach my students to do to make your business more passive. Like you mentioned meeting the guests in, in person. I can't recall the last time I met a guest in person. Okay. I do remote check-ins. Yeah. Um, I do remote, remote check-ins. Um, again, because my goal, like I told you before, like when we first started, we were talking about goals. For me, it was my freedom. Time mm-hmm. freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom. Mm-hmm. I can't have time freedom if I'm meeting every person. You got five give them the cars. keys. <laughs> give them yeah. the keys. Give them yeah. the keys. So um, for me, I learned about remote check-ins, um, mm. which I strongly suggest everybody do because you don't have to physically be there waiting on a customer. In the beginning, I did that because I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did that. Um, but then as I start investing in myself, buying courses, um, talking to other people who are where I'm trying to go. I was like, oh, remote check-ins. Like, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's Houston. I can have every intention in the world of meeting you at 12 Mm o'clock. But something happens on 16. This happens every day. And now, instead of me meeting you at 12 o'clock, I don't get there to 1.30. Like, Mm -hmm. who wants to sit for an hour and a half and wait on someone? So that's why I strongly advise remote check-ins. And you, you don't feel the pressure... Your guests don't feel the pressure, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's a science behind that. You know, you want (laughs) to make sure your vehicle is in some place that's secure, um, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, heavily populated, you know, Mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, but yeah, like remote check-in, like no one's sitting, waiting and, and, you know, vice versa. If I'm telling you, Hey, I'm gonna meet you at 12. I run into an accident. You sit and wait for me for an hour and a half. Like it just doesn't make a good, um, customer experience. Yeah. Yeah, that, I appreciate that makes that makes a whole lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, so so remote check ins. Um, in terms of cleaning the vehicle, um, that's time to zoom too, because don't you have to drop it off at the car wash and then? Nah, man, you see, you you doing too much. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. You you doing too much. <laughs> I'm gonna break it down. So what you do is you get a um, I have a car wash subscription. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even remember the car wash. I just know the the colors when I see it. it's the one with the duck. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, they have them all around Houston. Um, Mr. Car Wash or something like that. I don't know. It's the quack or something like that. Uh-huh. I don't know. But I got a car wash pass. Um, it's tied to your license plate. Mm-hmm. So I just run it through the car wash. You know, um, they clean, you know, the outside. But you take it yourself, right? After your car is dropped off? Before. Yes and no. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll answer that question. Okay. <laughs> so I run it through the car wash. Um, they provide you with the towels. You just get out, you know, mm-hmm. wipe it off real quick. Um, then, you know, vacuum it out. Most people don't use like the back seat, so you really don't have mm-hmm. to back, do the like vacuum the back seat or anything like that. Um, so honestly, when I first started doing this, it probably take me about thirty minutes, thirty to forty minutes to clean a car. 
Now mm-hmm. I could probably do it in like 10, 15 minutes. It really yeah. doesn't take that much time. Now, um, the funny thing is a lot of my customers, a lot of my renters, they'll wash the car for me just gonna ask before you. they return it. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> so they're like, I washed it. I, I vacuumed yep. it out. I was just because the same like, way, you cool. know, when it comes to like gas, when you rent a car from the airport and you have to fill your gas back up, I was wondering if there was a clause with Turo. Oh, absolutely. Where, you know, you could ask the customer to wash the car before you bring it back and they can take it to your place or do it on their own, whatever. Some people so. do that. Yeah, some people do that. Um, they incentivize the customer. You don't mm-hmm. really want to tell them yeah, yeah, that yeah. they have to do it, but you can incentivize them to do that. Um, me, I don't, um, because nine out of ten people do it anyway, like, yeah. um, already. So, and again, it's not that big of a deal for me to just literally, my drop-off spot is here, the car wash is here. So, it's just yeah. literally boom, boom, you know, and um, go do it. Um, I've been very fortunate that um, my rentals for, like, the last maybe five months have all been passive, meaning I have mm-hmm. one person in my rental that's been in my car since August. So wow. I don't have to worry about car changes. I mean, yeah. sorry, car washes. Um, Every 30 days, I'm like, all right, it's time to ch- change the oil. Mm-hmm. You know, send somebody out, change the oil. He goes on about his life. So I don't mm-hmm. see that car. Um, the other car that I have, um, I got that in November. Yeah, it was in November. It's been gone ever since then. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I just I don't see them enough to be like you know car washes is enough and again that goes back to your personal um, preference and how you want to set your business up. Do you want yeah. it to be more passive? Do you want it to be more active? It's in my opinion, it's more active when you have it on Toro mm-hmm. because Toro caters to um, short term rentals. People mm-hmm. who are in Houston, you know, like hey, I'm taking a girls trip, you know, Thursday through Monday. I'm being Houston. I need a rental, so you know, you have that person in your car. Then you might have a, a business professional that's like, hey, I'm in town for work you know monday through friday then you have mm-hmm. that person so it's it's more of a turnaround um whereas you have other platforms like hire car where they cater towards um delivery services so you have like uber drivers lyft drivers um uber eats so they're using the vehicle to make money mm-hmm. so they're going to be in the car longer mm-hmm. because this is their occupation like this is what they use the vehicle for so um again if your goal is to be hey i want to be as hands off as possible yeah. to make this a little bit more passive, you might lean a little bit more towards higher car. So those are the only two main platforms. Yeah, I think we always hear Turo because Turo's been around from since long, two, yeah. ten, whatever. Yeah. I remember when I was running from Turo back in two thousand ten, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, yeah. they they changed their name. Um, I forget what the 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 old name used to be, but Turo is like the the yeah. big dog. Yeah. It's kind of like the Amazon. Yeah. Of, of car. Uh, but no, it's not the only one. So you have Turo, you have higher car, you have get around. Um, if you have a truck, there's also um, yeah, fetch right truck. truck. Yeah, fetch yeah. truck. You put your truck on there. People rent out your truck when they move. Like, mm. uh, there's all kinds of ways that like that's, to to to, that. to get in this game. So um, again, it's about your personal preferences, how you want your business to go, how you want your business to structure. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, majority of my vehicles are on hire car because mm-hmm. it frees up my time to do stuff like this, like podcasting, yeah, yeah. Um, recording my co- course meeting with my mentee stuff like that i'm not worrying about okay i got this car i got you know have to drop off blah 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 mm-hmm. and it works for me some people you know um they have their vehicles on toro i've done both like i, mm-hmm. I there's pros and cons to both yeah. um toro is more you can make more money on a trip i think than hire car mm-hmm. um because toro will allow you to like do things like you talked about gas you know when you rent a car from um a car a car rental place at the airport they'll ask you do you want to prepay for fuel mm-hmm. you can do that you have that same option with um toro so but you know a higher, not higher, a higher higher car, car no um you do not have that option to prepay uh mm-hmm. for the for your guests to prepay for gas but it's like i gave you a full tank of gas so when it comes back it needs to have a full yeah, tank of gas that. Yeah. and if they don't then you can charge Sorry. them for that because you tell me that you take the pictures and stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Pictures yeah. are your life. Like in yeah. this business, pictures are your life. You want to document everything. Um, thousands. No, I'm just joking. Hundreds. They said to take a lot of pictures, though. Right? Yeah. Um. I think on the app, Toro says take between like, I think seven to fourteen. Mm-hmm. I say take between forty and a hundred. Mm. Um. And I teach you know my students um, what to take pictures of. Yeah. Um. How to to take pictures because with um Toro. If, if it's not documented, 
you're going to have a hard, hard time yeah. um, trying to fight that claim. Yeah. But um, for me, anytime that I, I've had a claim, I've had the proof, I had the documentation instantly. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm talking in a matter of hours, you really? know, before I'm, I'm compensated. And yeah. you think all the platforms pretty much align with Turo now or Turo is probably the best at getting back to that? What do you mean when you say Like when you have like a problem, like say somebody does a tear on your, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a car seat or something like that. Is Turo the best to like say, okay, hey, we, you got the picture, thank you, we see it, we'll take care of it, or you better hire. I'm hire saying, car. I'm going to say hire learning, yeah, hire car. <laughs> hire learning. Hire car is a little bit more. Let me see your idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more like slower compared to Turo. Like. No, I um, hire car will reimburse you as well. The difference is, so, for instance, um, I just had a a rental, geez, time is flying. I want to say it was like last week, but it was about mm -hmm. probably like three weeks ago now. Um, on hire a car. Um, I ended up getting paid three different ways off one rental. So, if, yeah. So, again, if you structure it correctly, yeah. you have your um, uh, SOPs, your standard operating procedures, you have in your description mm -hmm. what what is acceptable, what isn't, and then you have proof that someone violated that, then you can be compensated for that. Yeah. So the first way I got paid on that was through the actual rental. He kept it for like a week. The second way I got paid was he had a pet in my car. Mm -hmm. And I specifically say in the description, no pets are allowed. Mm -hmm. So I got paid um, a cleaning fee for that. So um, with hire car, they're going to reimburse you whatever you've spent. So let's say it cost you $100 to get the car cleaned because I had to get the car detailed and, you know, they had to, mm -hmm. it, it has cloth seats. So they had to vacuum, you know, get the pet hair out, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, let's say it cost me $100. Well, hire a car, they're going to say, hey, let me send the, show me the receipt. And then they're going to reimburse you $100. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third way I got paid on that particular renter, rental, sorry, he went over his mileage. Mm -hmm. So one rental I was able to get um, paid three different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I pocketed like an extra four fifty or something off wow. of that trip. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I used to get mad. Now yeah, yeah. I'm like, now it's like, hey, you break the you rules. You did what? Like, All right, okay, cool. cool. You okay. know what I'm saying? To a certain extent. <laughs> um, now on Toro, if that if that car would have been on Toro, um, Toro allows you to charge up to a two hundred and fifty dollar cleaning fee. So let's mm. say it only cost me a hundred dollars to get it clean. Toro will let you charge up to two fifty, so you can pocket. $150. So mm. that's kind of the difference yeah, of yeah. how you can make more money on um, Toro versus hire car. And I think that's because hire car is catering towards service people, like delivery people, stuff mm. like that. Um, well, I guess you shouldn't have a car. I mean, a, 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 a dog in the car. Mm. I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, you know gas, stuff yeah. like that, where it's Toro is more towards tourists and, um, you know, things of that nature, yeah. short term rentals. Yeah. So. And you explain all the differences in your course with the different platforms, right? Yeah, I talk mainly um, about Toro because that's the mm. big one. Um, if you can make it on Toro, figure Toro out, then the other ones are are, are just the same. It's it's the same concept, the same yeah. like interface. It's just you know just different. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. So okay, so I mean, you this is great information. So you went from two cars to zero cars. Yeah, so then, five cars. Okay. Two cars and then <laughs> a, yeah, then three cars. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but you say you got five now, right? So, Correct. Okay, so I guess within that time frame, like you have them from the start to now, if you can say like, um, maybe it was like the most you may have saw in a week, month. Like, what was the most that surprised you? You're like, oh shoot, like I made this much in it, or maybe even day, yeah, like, day, week, month when you were like, yeah, like I'm doing the right thing. What was the most like numerically you ever saw, like? Uh, it could be day, week, month, and you were like, oh, shoot, like, this this right here may be the, be the, be the thing to do. Um, I mean, for me, like I said, it clicked when I got those first two rentals. Because, mm -hmm. um, one, I was like, okay, I made like 1500 like, Okay, do another one. I made like three grand, mm -hmm. and I didn't have to do anything. Like, I and mean, that was in one week? No, that was a month. That okay, was okay. Legit. I wish it was. This <laughs> <laughs> is a week, man. We we be in Aruba somewhere doing this. Like, come on, Reg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get there. We're going to get there, though. We're going to manifest get there, yeah. Speak yeah. it. Speaking it to yeah. existence. No, not a week, but mm -hmm. a month. Um, yeah. Because my ROI, my return on investment, didn't match the time that I put in. Mm -hmm. I may, honestly, in the year and a half, close to two years that I've been in the rental car business, I may have put in 40 hours. So it was like, I put in, you know, 
maybe five hours. I don't know, maybe that month. Yeah. And I made three thousand dollars. Like, well, you mean you mean, put in five hours? Like the like, actual meeting the renter, or getting yeah. the car cleaned, or you know, getting the oil, like me actual my time. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant by that. If you calculate that to hours, okay. maybe five. It probably was less than that. And I got three thousand yeah. dollars. Like, how many days do you think you were renting on average, like per week, to like hit fifteen hundred per month? Um, or were they booked out pretty much eighty percent of the month, ninety percent of the month, I'm, the whole month? I'm a, really lately it's been the whole month, but mm. back then it was probably like ninety five percent of the mm-hmm. month, something like that. It may be one day um, yeah. where I didn't have the vehicle. Yeah. And I, I mean, it wasn't renting. I'm like, cool. I drove it to work, like, cause I'm getting to know the features of the car. Cause yeah. literally, time I got it, I took my pictures, I did what I had to do, listed it. Um, yeah. So even now, with all five cars, you see majority of them being rented out ninety percent, even with like the way the economy is going right now. I haven't seen my car. I don't even remember the last time I saw my car. Uh, I mean, I saw it Sunday because the guy had the flat tire. So uh-huh. that's being fixed. Actually, he's been hitting me up all day. Like, is the car done? Is the car ready? Mm-hmm. So um, that's going to be ready today. He's going to be back in it. Um, like I said, he's been in since August. I think last time I checked, that was like 125 days or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I literally, I do not see them. Um, yeah. I don't see them. Now, I do check up on my inventory. Um yeah. I would tell anyone in this, uh, in my book as well as my course, when you get into this business, you want to want to protect your asset, and uh, one of the ways you do that is with um, GPS tracker. Mm-hmm. So I have, um, I recommend three, <laughs> three, per three per vehicle, car. three per car, okay, three per car, because criminals are smart. Mm. So if they find one and they disable it, they might think like, oh, mm-hmm. they're not tracking me anymore. But you have you have two more as a backup. Mm. Um, two at the minimum, but three yeah. is my recommendation. Um, and one of them has to have a kill switch. Okay. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a Honda mm-hmm. or a Lambo or whatever. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to kill the vehicle in the event that you have to go get and you your. You have to get those installed right after you buy the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Okay. How and long it, is that usually a turnaround? They come to your house same day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, not same day. So, like, if I call them today's Wednesday, they might be like, "Okay, we can be out." Friday. Mm, okay, so you don't have so to drop it off at like a dealership or shop. The service that I use, they come out to your house, um, they install it, and um, so what I'm saying, like, it's um, passive, whereas I'm not hands on, yeah, but yeah. I still see what's going on with with, yeah. with my vehicle, so I can see where it's been driven, mm-hmm. if they if they're speeding, if they're braking hard. Um, the biggest thing too is the mileage, because mm-hmm. again, when you have long term renters, that's something that you have to be aware of. To make sure you're getting that oil change because mm-hmm. you know you don't get your oil change, engine blows up, and then that True. leads to a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, I can see the mileage, uh-huh. um, you know, in real time, like where they are, um, and I'm like, okay, it's time to get that oil change. Um, and, and tires come into play too, right? Well, not so much as oil changes. I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't have any tire issues. But yeah. um, again, the vehicles that I purchased were um, new, mm-hmm. were. Like 2022s or, you know, oh, so, so you, it wasn't. So you did purchase and you didn't purchase like used. When... Well, they were used new vehicles, if that makes sense. No. Like, what do you mean? They weren't, they had been driven before by someone else, you know, like. Um, like test drive, but not driven, driven like. As a or it was car. like, maybe it was like a, a rental car and then they got rid of it, uh-huh. you know, because they have certain mileage restrictions or like a company lease. I think one of the cars was like a company lease. Um, So when I bought it, it had like, um. I think one had like ten thousand miles. The other okay. one had like fifteen. So, so it was still brand new, like but no, no mileage no, no, coming no. off the, off the no. lot. I did that with one car. Um, How did that go? Because I hear people always say, "Don't do that." That was during the pandemic time, mm-hmm. and this, it was uh, my Mustang. And the price of a used Mustang was the same price as a brand new Mustang. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Why not get a brand?" And new I've been one? hearing that too now, where people say that the prices now of used cars are equating just to. The same amount of prices newer cars is that true? Or? It's possible. It depends on the make and the model. Yeah, um, it's possible. Again, that's why it's like do your research. You know, yeah. to me, if I'm gonna spend, you know, thirty thousand dollars on a used car, or a brand new car, like give like, me the give me the ahead, brand new, new car. One. That yeah, you have less problems. With. If yeah. It's, yeah. Um, but yeah, for um, for Mustangs, they were the same price. Yeah. Um, for some other vehicles, probably not. Um, okay. but yeah, like it just depends on the make and model, like Hondas. You could probably, it might be better to, I don't know. It could be better to buy a 
a brand new Honda versus a used Honda. Again, it depends on the mileage. It depends yeah. again which what your goals are and how you're you're trying to structure it. Because um, in addition, for me, in addition to making money off my rental, also um, want to make money when I purchase the vehicle. So meaning that I'm not upside down. I have equity in it mm -hmm. during my rental, and then eventually, because it's a business for me, I'm gonna have to offload these vehicles. So I want to mm -hmm. make sure that I'm able to make money too when I sell them, and mm -hmm. I'm not taking a loss. So okay. again, that's why it's all. It's not as as simple as some people make it. Just go get a car and yeah, yeah. and put it on there. If you're trying to turn it into you know a business mm -hmm. and have a a strategy yeah. um, about it. Yeah. So so what are your goals? Like what's your goal? Let's say like. I don't because I can go super super. Let's let's start a super long term. Like, what do you what's what's your end goal for the, when you see yourself or if you see yourself exiting out the business? Like, what's your end goal for this? Have you thought about that yet? Um, I have. Um, so my end goal is to eventually, um, transition off of the peer to peer platform and have my own rental car agency slash dealership. Mm -hmm. So you can rent the car or you can buy the car. Mm. Um, I foresee someone else running the day to day operations, um, but I still own it. Mm -hmm. um, long term goal is to mentor and to be like a um, a consultant to mm -hmm. people who want to get in the business. So like you know we something like this we'll just sit down we'll talk and mm -hmm. um, you know I can be that guide that that mentor towards you towards getting towards the business. Um, so I still want to have, um, inventory and I still want to be able to provide, you know, economy cars to, to, to my customers and things of that nature. But I don't want to be like day to day. Yeah, like, yeah. Have you, have you set like a goal for like, do you have like a certain number of cars you want? I know some people I've heard like, well, I don't want 10, I want 20, I want a hundred cars. Mm -hmm. do, have you, do you have that type of goal or not really? By this time next year, I want twenty two cars. You want twenty two? Why twenty two? Wow, that's a different number. Like you didn't know, say just, twenty, you didn't say. It just say came to me. 15. It was like it just came to me. It was like twenty two. Have I'm you like, like ran the numbers for twenty two cars and like you know like okay I'll be making this at twenty two get guesstimating you know based on what oh, you've yeah, done so far. Yeah. I'm like, like Martin. Woo woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> woo woo woo. <laughs> so, so I mean, will that will that like give? Do you see yourself like doing better than you did at your corporate job when you hit 22 cars? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely. And I already feel I'm doing better at my corporate job in the sense that it's something that I want to do. It's something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that I can sit and talk to you for another two hours. I about could this. too. I'm you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so it's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I took from an idea, you yeah. know, and it has blossomed into something, you yeah. know? The fact that I'm here and you even asked me like to come share my knowledge, like yeah. you know, to me I feel that's more uh, you know a win than you know when I was in you know corporate America. Um, the fact that I have you know mentees right now, the fact that you know mm -hmm. I wrote an ebook, like all of that is to me is is um, success and more successful because it's like it was something that I did. Yeah, you know, not like boosting myself up. Yeah. Um, no, that's, when did you know it was time for you to write your ebook? Like, what what pushed you to write your ebook? Um, so I'm a part of, um, this group called, uh, the wealth squad uh -huh. and it's about teaching us or teaching people about financial literacy. And one of the, um, I guess co-host, he, uh, he does Toro. So I actually bought his course on doing Toro. Cause I, again, I had been thinking about it. Like I said, I've been in the industry, like I was working in the automobile industry and I'm just like, huh, I've been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. So I bought his course on like how to get started. So, um, in the wealth squad every month, like a calendar comes out and every day there's a different topic that, you know, um, someone teaches, teaches about whether it's, you know, real estate, crypto, whatever. So, um, the guy I bought the course from, he did, um, Toro, I believe it was on Thursdays. He had a, a Toro uh, class, like an hour. So um, I um, I started following him on Instagram. And then I just told him one day, like, you know, in his DM, like, hey, I bought your course. It was really insightful for me. It helped me out. It was a game changer because he was the one that told me about the lock boxes to mm -hmm. do the remote delivery. So I'm like, I'm not sitting here, you know, waiting yeah. for somebody with keys. So I was like, it's just been a game changer. And I told him about, you know, um, the lock box and, 
how that helped me and you know my business i think at the time i had the two vehicles um and he was just like yo that's dope you know um would you like to come on the wealth squad and you know share your share how it's helped you yeah and I said, sure. I didn't really mean it. I was like, yeah, I'll come. But I didn't really mean it. And I didn't think, um, because the calendar comes out a month in advance, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, he going to forget about it, you know, by the time yeah. it rolls around. Well, now he hit me up, like, hey, you still going to come on, you know, the Well Squad talk? And I'm just like, oh, shoot. Um, so I did it. And it was in front of an audience. It was eight people. Yeah. But it was, like, the most fun that I had because these were eight people. Again, you can attend which classes, you know, mm -hmm. you're interested in. Um and we talked. We I think I was on there for like an hour. Um, we talked. But then, you know, some of them uh, followed me on um, Instagram. So we're talking and um, I'm answering questions. And it was just like I kept getting the same questions over and over. Mm -hmm. And then somebody was like, you know, you should do an ebook. You should put this in a book. This is great mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, all right, I'll, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Now Why not? Why, yeah. Got the ebook. Now you're about to do the course. Yeah, like so, like Maya from Girlfriends. I'm an authorist. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the time span from now? You want to finish your course so you can launch it? Just because the people watching this, of course, of course, are gonna be look probably looking for it. Of course, it's gonna be in our caption and our notes. So what's your when do you think you're gonna have your course finished? Um, I was the on, first edition. I was on the uh, Grow Your Business Summit last night uh -huh. with Neo. And he was like, what is one non-negotiable goal that you're going to do by the end of 2022? And mine and is this year. Two more weeks. Two yeah. more weeks is my course will be done. Mm. So look for it um, January. Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm definitely going to support it and put in. I appreciate I it, I definitely am. So, all right. So you, you actually just touched on something which I wanted to start with our first episode because I saw that David did it in here. It's kind of like midway. And I, that's why I have a couple people here in the room. So you talk about the audience. So we have some people come in. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to, if you're cool with it, they wanted to ask you some open live questions. All right. All right so now what we're going to do is we're just going to have some questions for the audience. This is the first time they were doing on the podcast, but Taj, I'm looking forward to this. So audience, what's going on? What's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up? So, so y'all speak loud. Tell us y'all questions. Um, which vehicles in your fleet do you feel as though get rented out the most? Ooh, they get rented out the most. Style body things like that or what best ones in houston uh my best rentals um that's been gone the longest that people love the most are my uh 2022 hyundai elantras um the ones with the new body style really really especially uh lift drivers they love them because um it's deceiving because when you see it and you get in, you're like, oh, wow, the back is spacious. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's got the screen in there. Um, the um, They kind of designed it like, I guess, a race car. Mm -hmm. um, has, like, all the features, Apple Play, cruise control, like, um, voice control. But, yeah, it's, it's one of those cars where when you see it, you're like, oh, that's cute. But then when you open it up, you're like, oh, this is nice, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um, and it's great on gas. Like, $25 fills up your tank. <laughs> is, it, is it all gas or is it any electric or is it just I don't have any electric vehicles okay. um I don't think that's a, a road I'm gonna go down mm -hmm. um just because it's a lot of relying on your renter to make sure that they do they do due diligence so like electric vehicles are great but you have to know where you are in the city where you can go and charge them mm. you know and again I have peers who have electric vehicles and they're like I had to go get my vehicle because my customer drove from here to Austin, didn't try charge up the vehicle, mm -hmm. it broke down, you know, mm -hmm. in some small town that doesn't have charging stations. So yeah. again, for me, Makes I like sense. stability and simple. So Makes sense. not right now. But you never know. I love it. Nick. I wanna ask, uh, would it be good to like to promote your car yourself? Um, so where you can get more bookings through Turo, and let Turo advertise the car uh, on their own platform. That is a great question. Um I say uh, do it yourself just because, um, again, you got to realize Toro is a business. So, and there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are on Toro. Um, and um, you promoting your business, I feel like no one can speak to your business like you can. So, um, I think that's a great idea to promote your business um, yourself. Um, on your social media, if you go on my social media page, I have a link tree. And I have a, a button that says rent my rise and it goes straight to my Toro page. Um, 
same thing, you know, flyers. Some people have flyers and they pass them out, cars. But I think um, self-promotion, excuse me, self-promotion, promoting mm -hmm. yourself is the best than waiting on um, Toro. Because Toro is an algorithm, you know, like mm -hmm. it's it's all uh, based upon, you know, like your reviews, cancellation rate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I just feel, can't nobody speak for you. I was going to ask you too, because I was wondering like, should, do a lot of people, I know of course you see like the luxury cars or mm -hmm. promoting on social media and stuff. That's like a norm because you know, people want to go for those high end exotic cars. But that was, it was like that same question came on mind. Like if, when I, if or when I was a person to get an economy car, can you get the same tap in rate from like, you know, these economy cars that you have, you know? Yeah, I, you can, um, you go to my page. That's what I have, you know, mm -hmm. um, Again, it's your niche. Like, who is your target audience? For me, mm -hmm. my target audience is um, traveling nurses and traveling professionals who want to get around Houston in an affordable economy car. Mm -hmm. That's who I focus in. That's who I target all my messaging to. Mm -hmm. So having that target, you're going to have a certain type of message. You know, like, if you're a traveling nurse and you're here for 13 weeks, like um, the guy I was telling you about where the... The construct the, the construction accident happened. You're not trying to get around a Lambo to go to the hospital and be mm -hmm. in surgery for like mm -hmm. 20 hours, you know. Like, so, um, yeah, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you gonna pull yeah. up to the hospital, the Lambo, yeah, like, like, you know, like, right? so you gotta, you know, um, once you, you niche it down and you figure out who you're talk, talking to, then you can market to them. So, I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, I got you an affordable economy car, you know, um. You're not, he was from Canada, so you're not in your home country at that, not mm -hmm. alone. You, you're going to be living in a hotel, you're going to be paying for food, sure. you know, yeah. do you want to worry about, I don't know how much it costs to fill up a Lambo, but I would imagine yeah. it's more than $25. Yeah. You know, do you want to worry okay. about the high prices of gas? So again, once you mm -hmm. niche down and you're speaking to your market, then um, that other, that flash and stuff, they're going to relate because they're mm -hmm. like, what do, what do I need with a Lambo? You know, mm -hmm. like. True. I ain't, yeah, you know, so, I, don't think I mean, they're great cars. Like, yeah. eventually, my economy cars are gonna pay for my Lambo, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay. So, I think. Any other questions? Yeah. Um. So, where and how did you figure out where you want to store your cars, especially oh, with you question. having five cars because you can't have them in your driveway? So, like, how did you choose where you were gonna store? I love that question. When people ask me, where do you keep your cars? You ready for my answer? It's, go, it's groundbreaking. Y'all ready? <laughs> okay. Y'all ready? At my renter's house. Keep them rented out. You don't have to worry about where to keep your cars. Even during the off season? Well, you don't have any off seasons, you said, really, huh? Nope. Um, <laughs> I have Storage has not been an issue um, for yeah. me. Um, keep them at, at your, um, your renter's house. Keep them rented out, and they park them for you. Um, now, I will tell you, in terms of um, what I think you might be getting... Two with that question, like your pickup locations and where they want to do that. Um, again, you want to do somewhere public. So um, my pickup location is in a shopping, like a shopping center. You know how they have like, Targets and yeah, Walmart's yeah. and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, so you want to do somewhere public like that. You never, ever, ever, ever want to have them meet you at your house. Like, that was our next question. So what if like you live in an apartment complex and say that apartment complex has a garage? Would you recommend that? Is that safe? Or no? Would you rather go to the Randalls, go to the Target parking shops close to you? I would say just go to, a, go to a Kroger or something. Yeah, like don't. Meet you. Better. That's just me. Mm -hmm. um, now, I do know some people who live in apartment complexes and they'll park the car like outside of the gate. Mm -hmm. To me, that's still a little too close to home. Mm -hmm. you Why know? don't you want to bring people closer? Because the way I'm thinking, okay, if I want to watch my car, you know, and I want to know if I just want to pass by, make sure it got back or whatever, like... Um, like I said, I've, I've rented two cars off Turo, and I remember picking them up from parking garages and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I know sometimes they were business parking garages. Mm -hmm. You know, they were never, like, um, at somebody's house, like you said, in the driveway. But I guess it's, do you feel like you don't want people to know, like, where you stay? or Absolutely. It's a safety issue. I yeah. want you knocking on my door like, uh, I had a blowout on 69. Yeah, what yeah, you going to yeah. do? Like, no. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think just to to separate that, business and personal you know like yeah. you don't need to know where i live um <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't want you coming to my house and you know everybody doesn't 
have your best interest at heart, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, they'll watch you, see where you park the car, follow you that's, home. That's the possibility, yeah. you know. Um, I had um, actually the guy that installed my GPS. Um, he does uh, Toro on the side, mm-hmm. and he said he made the mistake of having the renter come to his house. And um, long story short, when it was time to return the vehicle, um, he couldn't get in touch with the renter. So he ha- obviously he had GPS because he installs them for a living. Mm-hmm. So he rolled up on the car where his car was, and he just like yanked the door open because he's like, you know, at this time he's like heated. Mm-hmm. And it was a guy that rented his car. It was a girl who was driving it. So she like, what the, you know, he like, what the, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So he's like, you're in my car. You know, he gets the car back. The guy calls him, was like, yeah, I know you live. I'm going to come by and shoot up your house. You know, oh so, you know, it's <laughs> like... <laughs> Okay, yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. That right. would be my advice. Don't yeah, do it. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, you can keep them, you know, somewhere that's public. Mm-hmm. Um, like a, a Kroger or HEB. Mm-hmm. You want to blend your cars in, you know, so they look like the normal yeah, traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, parking garage. So if you keep them at the airport, um, a parking garage is great. But mm-hmm. you also want to make sure it's a, a garage that is monitored, mm-hmm. that they have security. Um, like it, where the cameras or security guard, um, it's open 24 seven because mm-hmm. you know, when, again, flights get delayed or mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you can store them in public places, <clears> but again, you want to make sure that it's somewhere that's safe, um, somewhere that's monitored and just not, you know, anywhere. It was great info. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then that's when you would use the remote check-ins because unless you want to drive to the airport every time you get a rental, but and I what, don't. I know I, I meant to ask you that was my question. What would you say would be... I know you said get three of them. You don't have to tell all three. They need me to buy your course for that. But <laughs> for number one, like, what would be your number one recommendation for like the GPS trackers that you like, like your preference that you like? Like a brand or mm-hmm. yeah, brand. That um, you like I use uh, Spirion. That's, Spirion. Mm-hmm. Okay. They have a fleet, a fleet locator Spirion. Yeah, I, okay. I use them, um, and they also have the, the kill switch. And again, mm-hmm. you can go in and you can see. Your vehicle, you can set up a geofencing because um, that happens a lot. So What's what geofencing? It, geofencing means you say, if my vehicle leaves Houston, I want to be alerted. Mm-hmm. So you don't you look up you don't look up one day and your car's in Alabama, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like so. Um, that's again a part of my SOPs. Mm-hmm. And um, when I get a new renter, that's something that I make you know crystal clear. Like the vehicle is not to leave the city of Houston. Mm-hmm. Some people don't listen. I've had people that don't listen. Um, and again, it goes right to my smartphone. I'll get an alert. Um, and then you can decide what you want to do at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, usually for me, um, the one time it did happen, it was just a quick text message, you know, yeah. um, bring my vehicle back. Yeah. Um, they turn back around. They didn't. Then again, that's when you can kill the vehicle and then go get it. Yeah. And speaking of SOPs, I'm not the best in English. So my oh, SOP sorry. may be two sentences. <laughs> but how did you like, how do you... How do you come up, or how have you kept, or how have you continue to keep evolving your SOPs to where you have what you have now versus like when you first started? Like, how, I know I was a copy and paste, of course, from like maybe another example you saw mm-hmm. to now, like where you've had all your experiences, so you know what to equate into it. Like, how how did you get to the point where you're at with your SOPs and how detailed they are now? That's just an experience. Yeah. Um, experience is a great teacher. Um, <laughs> but you said like the cat hairs and stuff like that, and geo fencing and all that. Yeah, yeah, just experience. Um, just being in different situations, it's like oh, because a lot of this stuff, and that's why it's great to have a mentor. Because mm-hmm. a lot of things you're not gonna know until you're in that situation. You know, mm-hmm. like you can sit and think, okay, what if this happens? You know, accident. Yeah, I got that. What if this happens? What if that? But there's a lot of things, a lot of great areas that you're just not gonna know until it happens. And then once it happens, you're like oh. In case this happens, da, 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 you know, put that in there and have mm-hmm. a um have that written down, have that somewhere that's that's visible. And then if you have employees or as you bring on employees, you can be like, look, this is how we do things. Mm-hmm. Um and you've covered, you know, not everything, but as much as you, you possibly can. But yeah, some yeah. things you just experience it. It's a great teacher. Um, even with those total losses that I was telling you about, all three of them, um, you asked me, did I did get discouraged? No, because I learned so much mm-hmm. in, in that process. Um, of what to do, what not to do. Um, you know, one thing that I tell people is, you know, this is your asset. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is your asset. Yes, Toro um, filters people, but at the end of the day, this is your asset, and you can go through your own screening process. Mm. And in the beginning, I didn't do that. Mm. And I had that little voice that was like, eh, maybe you shouldn't, but mm-hmm. I was like, eh, psh, they paying $700. Like, <laughs> here go the keys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then... I ended up with with a problem um, mm-hmm. or or an issue or something happened. So now, um, since I'm not chasing the money, it's more about um, quality, more impact. Like yeah, and it, is it a good fit? Like yeah. certain certain people just it's just not a good fit, you know. Um, but it's it's your business, it's your asset, and I tell everybody, use the power of discernment. Like, yeah. you do not have to accept every trip. Really? No. I thought you did. Yeah. But there's a there's a filter, and again, this is going to be in the course, that you can go on Toro and you can, um, like, pre-select, well, not pre-select, but I, select who you want in your car. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, that's just, you know, simple private message, you know, hey, how's it going, da da da, yeah. what are you in town for, or, you know, something like that, and, and after can, a while, you can kind of feel people out, and be like, okay, this will be a good fit, or, yeah. nah, this ain't gonna be a good fit. That's what I was gonna ask, like, you can tell through kind of, like, this text communication, if this person isn't, or is a good fit, based off how they're communicating with you. Yeah, um, also, there are other things that are <laughs> warning signs, um, and I mean this in no disrespect, but, you know, on certain platforms, if you go book my car and I hit accept and then it's like insufficient funds, uh-huh. like yep. to me, true, I'm just true. like, mm. all right, you know, mm-hmm. some people are like, oh, I got to run to the store, put some money on my car, yeah. da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm not knocking it, not mm-hmm. saying that I haven't rented to those people. Some people are good people, but for me, that like kind my antennas sense. go up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So then I'm mm-hmm. starting to ask questions mm-hmm. so like what are you using the vehicle for how long are you plan on using it you know mm-hmm. um those type of things you know yeah. because again like i said it's your asset and yeah. at the end of the day you want to, pr- to protect your asset i'd rather be wrong and lose out on money yeah than be wrong and lose out on asset or you know um worse you know um one part of the business that people don't talk about you know um is loss of life you know i had mm-hmm. a um, a renter who was in a, a very bad car accident. She didn't didn't uh, die, but she was severely injured. Like she broke both her wrists, both her arms, both of her ankles. You know, she had to be. Um, the ambulance had to take her to the hospital. You know, she was unconscious. Like this is real life. So mm-hmm. like, if I can, in a conversation, gauge whether or not you are responsible or you drive reckless, mm-hmm. then I'm gonna pass on that trip. You get, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it's not about the money at this point you know it's about you know life (laughs) you know because i want everybody to make it wherever they're going back home you know safely in one piece then you gotta think about other people on the road Mm -hmm. and then you know stuff Mm -hmm. like that so that's what i mean when i say like use the power of discernment discernment. don't just rent to everybody yeah Yeah. they do their their filter or background check but Mm -hmm. again it's it's your it's your asset and every time for me when i was doing in face drop offs, handing people the keys and I got that gut feeling and I didn't follow it, it didn't turn out the way I wanted. Now it wasn't mm-hmm. always a total loss. It you know Yeah. One person it was like, you know, smoking weed. It's like, come on, dude, you know, mm-hmm. so now I, mm-hmm. I gotta deal with that, you know, getting the weed smoke out mm-hmm. and you know, all that type of stuff. But yeah, just you know once you start doing it, it's hard to explain, but once you start doing it, you can just kinda So it's like an it. example, like that's a good example you just put out interrupt you, but it's smoking weed you can't take a picture of smoking weed. So how do you put that in like your, well, yeah, you may be in your SOP, but how do you report something like that to true when you can't take a picture of how something smells? Well, they left evidence. Oh, okay. So they, they, they messed they, up there. <laughs> okay. they, they almost had it. Yeah. It's like yeah. they almost had it. Like mm-hmm. you, you get some very interesting stories. So what happened, um, she returned the vehicle mm-hmm. and it was kind of suspect because it wasn't, what was it? Was it the inside? I think the inside was wet. Like, I could tell it had been detailed. And I'm like, why would you detail the inside of the car? But the outside car was dirty. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it had been driven. You could see the marks. I'm just like, hmm, that's interesting. And so um, she cleaned the inside. But, you know, the part in the car where it used to be like a cigarette, you can hit the button and it pops up. 
she didn't clean inside there. So it was mm-hmm. ashes, you know, um, uh, leaves, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, I took a picture and I hit her with a cleaning fee. Mm-hmm. And so um, she uh, messaged me on the app like, why are you charging me for a cleaning fee? Because in her mind, you know, she she had cleaned it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not one to go back and forth. So I just sent her the picture and she mm-hmm. stopped responding. So, um, <laughs> like... Yeah. yeah, so yeah. <laughs> um, that's how, like, a lot of times this residue, um, and I shouldn't be saying that because people that smoke weed, they're going to be like, oh, let me make sure to clean it. They leave evidence. Okay. They, they leave oh, that's evidence. why I was wondering, you know, about things like, the, you know, cigarette smoke, especially if you're having your SOP, no cigarette smoke. They leave no. evidence. And then yeah. um, the smell, too. You yeah. know, um, I've had one person, they didn't leave any evidence, but clearly it smelled like you know but uh, how, marijuana. How does Turo like verify like cigarette smoke and stuff? Like I just that? told them what happened, and yeah. they they reimbursed me. Really, um, so Turo's not going to really combat that too much. If, I, I haven't had, yeah, I hadn't had that um, that issue. You mm-hmm. know, um, I don't know. Maybe the other someone else. Yeah. may have said that about the guests, but, yeah. you know, they reimbursed me. Um, I said that because I mean, you think about, like, when people get in luxury cars, they want to do certain things, they shoot videos and mm-hmm. stuff, and, you know, you think about stuff like that, like, you know, is that's an element, you know, if you say, hey, like, no cigarette smoke, no weed smoke, like, how do you go, you know, tit for tat on verifying that, you know? Usually they leave evidence, um, yeah. and it's like, when you stand on the truth, you really don't have to go searching for stuff, yeah, yeah, it yeah. just, it, it falls into your lap, so, yeah. you know, um... <laughs> I'm a part of a, some Toro groups. Just this week, somebody was cleaning out a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Somebody left, you know, a bag of cocaine in the, the center console. So wow! <laughs> <laughs> in your car, somebody? No, else no, no, no. This is somebody else oh, in the group okay. that part. Nah, nah, okay. nah. So like, you said, yeah, I, I know. I, I could talk to you for days. I'm like, yeah, we're going all on trip, topic, but, but yeah. For like for that, you said Toro groups. Like, do does Toro have like already automatically groups you can join once you j- join the platform, or do you go looking for those groups to join locally, or yeah. is it more national scale? Like, what was your preference when you look to getting people who could help you or mentor you? I know you said you were a part of one already, but mm-hmm. after the fact, did you join any other ones just for like? Yeah, I do for one. Um, so for me, I know that in order to get those 22 cars that I talked about, I have to do more joint ventures or more mm-hmm. co-host. Some people call it co-host or vehicle management deals, um, meaning, um, let's say, security guy over here. I'm mm-hmm. you. He has a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. We partner. He lets me use his vehicle on my platform. So yeah. I know in order to get to that number, usually people who have like 10, 18, 20, yeah, yeah, 30 yeah. cars, that's what they do. So I joined those groups to, um, cause I'm in there trying to find people like, Hey, yeah. let, let's, let's partner up or, you know, things of that nature. And then while I'm in there, you know, I read about stuff that goes on and then people share their experiences and stuff like that. But, um, Facebook, that's how mm-hmm. Facebook, Facebook has all kinds of, so Facebook's um, still popping <laughs> for, groups. for groups, for stuff for like that. Like yeah, that. yeah. 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 Okay. So like Facebook has, um, all kinds of different type of, you know, Toro groups and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, again, I'm in it focused, um, on trying to, um, on building relationships and stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. I don't pay attention to a lot of the noise because um, a lot of it is, you know, this yeah. person wrecked my car, this person yeah. did that, da 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 And it, I think it can create anxiety in some people, yeah. you know. So um, for me, I'm very focused on this is what I'm in here for. Um, yeah. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, and I just, you know, spend my time on there and then I, I, I dip off. But um it's a good, it's a good uh, tool, and then they also have some certain people too that I mean, there's good and bad um, people who have been like banded from the site or mm-hmm. they rented somebody else's car and just totally trashed it. You know, they'd be like, you know, yeah. don't rent to this person <laughs> or you know, yeah. um, so something like that. I pay attention. Houston don't really pop up too much. Atlanta okay. though, oh. like, shoot, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Houston, like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, but yeah, I don't, I don't see. I don't See us in there, but Atlanta. So Houston's not as much of a headache as Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's always Atlanta. Like, wow. Okay. It's always right. well, that's good to know. I guess we in the right city to keep it moving. Hopefully, so. I don't know. Maybe it's just so many people. Like, I don't know, yeah. but yeah. Well, Tosh, I really appreciate this information, man. You gave us so many gems. I hope so. Yeah. I appreciate you, you know, just being open and giving, like I said, this inf- inf- information, inspiration, and instruction, you know, just getting into the game, you know, yeah. which I... Just get started. Uh, that, that, just that get started. My just... Last question, like, what would your advice be to anybody who nothing about this and they're living here thinking like, okay, I'm watching this interview with Tosh, and, you know, what, what would that, that was going to be my question. Like, what would you tell that person? You know, 
So just buy started. my ebook. Yep. That part. <laughs> get my course and just tap in on um all social media platforms. Um my company name is any, so that's the letter N, the letter E underscore rentals. Um tap in. Is that on which platforms? I'm on Instagram, TikTok. That's it. Yeah, Instagram so and TikTok. And if they want to find you on the social media, it's N E dash underscore, like underscore, underscore then rentals. rentals. Yep. And they can go find your rentals there, your ebook there, mm-hmm. the course that'll be here in two weeks. Like yep. you manifest that. The course is going to be here in two weeks. Um, DM me. Just say, mm-hmm. hey, I saw you on um, Reg, Reg's podcast mm-hmm. or, or whatever. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. But I think the first thing is to do your research um, and then find a mentor or someone um, that's been where you're trying to go, and then um, educate yourself. Or actually, just not in any order. Just do those three things. Like, educate yourself, do your research, mm-hmm. um, find a mentor, and then just jump into the game. And um, it's, it's very rewarding. It's very fun. Um, mm-hmm. You get to meet all kinds of people. Like, I've met people from all over the world. Because, um, you know, it's Houston. Like, mm-hmm. everybody comes to Houston. Um, and it's just a great great place to have a rental car business because you know um you need a car yeah. like yeah. <laughs> you need a car yeah. to get around so yeah and I, this you know i know you said to 22 cars by this time next year this time next year that'll be close to engine 20, 2023 mm-hmm. so and you you can correct me if i'm wrong i heard that the average car on Turo usually makes about ten thousand a year is that true or not what you think I think it's a little bit more than that. I'd probably say about 12. Okay. About so, 12. So we round about our low ball and you say 10. So that means... Make the math easy. I yeah, guess. make the math easy. <laughs> so if somebody who wanted to invest in themselves could easily, if you're making, let's say, 100K a year at your corporate job within a matter of getting 10 cars, match that mm-hmm. amount. And they'd be able to make that transition like you. Yeah. Correct? And you can make a lot more because, like I said, there are different things you can charge for or... Um, I didn't even mention. I'm gonna have to come back, man. Yes, I didn't even mention. Yeah, you know, I didn't I even mention you. like some of the, the things you can like charge for. Like people who have families, you know, you don't want to bring your car seats. Some people rent out car seats. You mm. know, there are all different types of ways you can um to make money in this game. So. I love it. I yeah. love it. Man, I thank you so much for I your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad we met. I want to shout out if he ever watches this interview, it would be great if he did. David Shans. David Shans changed our life. Yeah. Changed our life. The reason yeah. we me and you both met at the morning meetup family reunion. Right. You know, we both went out on a whim to total introverts to get out there and right. be extroverted and networking. I just want to say shout out to David, man. David, yeah. Thank you, Tasha. And thank you. I'm looking forward to you hitting those 22 cars plus more. Making a million a year, if not more, and then starting that fleet and that dealership and us coming back, you know, several months, several years from now, you telling your story on how you went from this to that, Tasha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reggie. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. This was fun.